Most people in America are familiar with what is and isn't called self-protection. Self-protection and self-preservation seminars are something I used to teach. What I used to teach people was how to prevent problems. In Japanese culture, that is a huge deal. How do we print, prevent problems that do not cause us a loss of face, which in Japanese basically means a loss of reputation? How do I protect myself in the things that I'm supposed to do for my work and my life and my family without basically embarrassing myself? Many people in America want their 15 minutes of fame, whether that's in their local community, whether that's in front of somebody that they really like, or whether that's just for them to feel good about themselves. People in America are also very good at prosecuting or persecuting other people, and most people don't want that today. Most people are wanting to be peacekeepers today. You see, people don't really like the idea of war, which is why most of America is without war. There are the stupid people of America that are undereducated, undertrained, and not ready for the world today. Those people are lazy as parents. It's a typical young child who has gotten pregnant too early and is not mature enough to handle the psycho-emotional and intellectual preparations of a child. They're the type of kid that goes off shopping and leaves their baby at home. And you're like, hmm, where's the kid? But I ask that question regularly out of concern for a child's safety and SIDS when a child can literally die in a crib. We of course aren't going to talk about that today because that's not the purpose of my conversation. My conversation is that people like to create drama. It's sort of a codependency high for some people. Others of us just say, please, get a room, get over it, or grow up. Because life is hard. And as Brian Tracy, a great sales guru, says, life is a series of crises or life is a series of problems only interrupted by a crisis. I might have monkeyed that quote a little, but I have had a couple strokes, and I did get beaten down by a black boy in his 20s who just thought that a white man was something that he could hurt in today's America. That was quite an eye-opener and a surprise, but it also required me to make a decision, a self-preservation and self-defense decision. My self-preservation decision was I had to cover my head while the boy basically pushed me to the ground so that my face was at the ground and he stomped on my head. Can you believe this? That a young black man in America who has come out of a history and heritage of fighting for equal rights would do something like this. Now in terms of self-defense decisions, since I am technically a black belt, and did go through quite a lot of training through college and a little after, not only training in martial arts, but also teaching people martial arts and self-defense, I had to make a decision. Is this the type of mind in front of me that if I fight back and win, that I'll get out of in the future? You see, the mentality of young people today is, if I lose, then what I'm going to do is bring three other guys with me so that next time I'll be better. And really, that's not a fair fight. In the old days of gentlemanly conduct, there was, well, these duels or local fights. And once the fight was over, usually what would happen is the victor won, the loser lost, and then at some point they went off and got a brew and became, I don't know, either better together or simply decided to say adieu. You see, gentlemen today aren't allowed to do that, but there's always a player who's coming from an impoverished mindset who thinks that even still it's okay to walk around the community cursing at someone, yelling at someone that they don't even know and then threaten to beat them up. And while many men will mutter in their rage or their anger, I'm going to kill you, most of us don't mean it. The truth is that there are people who antagonize us, antagonize us and people who abuse us and people who berate us that would deserve some sort of justice. But creating peace in any situation or creating peace in a family of origin or creating peace with someone we love takes a lot of effort. Sometimes when the abuse goes on for so long, a person just decides, I've had enough. The only question that I always ask people who are in some of my training programs about God is, did you actually ask Jesus how to handle it? 
or whatever your god might be, whatever your deity of your culture or your race is, or your personal preference. And then I usually ask, did you try at any time in person to create peace? Because there are people like me who are diehards that will say, look, God is leading me to say to you, I'm going to rebuke you, but I'm going to love you. I'm going to rebuke you, but I'm going to love you. Because this is what's on my heart and soul today. In America, we don't usually do that very often because we're so fast at saying, talk to the hand. I did nothing wrong. I am not accountable for my behavior. I'm not accountable for my activities. I'm not accountable for my actions. I'm not accountable for my telephone calls. I'm not accountable for my private conversations with police in which they convinced me to do something to you which cost you thousands of dollars. It's interesting how people want to avoid their responsibility. Most people who are trying to create new relationships will say, I've been there, I've done that, I'm not doing it again. Other people will say, let's just keep doing that shit to them over and over so they can't get forward again. What I'm trying to call out from people is the realization that every day you make a choice. You make a choice by what kind of person you're going to be when you wake up to the time that you go to bed. And you have to make a choice in every relationship you have um, and amongst the people who are loving and kind to you and a part of your actual family of choice, as well as the people who are total strangers to you and don't know you from Adam. The reality is in life we have one moment of time, usually, where we monkey ourselves and we make the wrong decision. And those impacts of that decision usually last a lifetime in someone else. In life we have moments of time to speak the truth about God. And regardless of your faith, regardless of your religion, regardless of your spirituality, making peace is your decision. 